You know, it's funny. Um, when you look at an artist's discography, especially like uh, artists that had such a vast one like Pink Floyd, they put their blood, sweat, and tears into every single album. And still, you can find an album and be like, they're not there yet. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the time, at that moment, you're like, you know, they're progressing. So you're right. like, this is so great. Right. Like, you know, can it get better? Like, you know what I mean? Like, of course it can and stuff. But it's just so, so interesting. Because like you put everything into that album and you feel like you really, but I guess it's just for that time. Mm. You did go over the moon and you did do really, really, really great. It's just like later on you look back and you're just like, man, we were just children in the music world here. Right. It's crazy. But it's really interesting how it works because all of those things that we were talking about, how Sid left and then they kind of were left on their own and they had to figure it out and they're experimenting with all these different things. It all basically culminates Mm -hmm. in their album, After Metal. I don't remember what it's called. Dark Side of the Sun? I think so. Is there a Dark Side of the Sun? I think. think Were they there? No. Oh, wait. Oh, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, yeah. My bad. My bad, everyone. Oh, Totally. Totally forgot about that one. And this is like, I mean, this is like, I don't even know. I mean, we could probably do a whole podcast just on this album. Yeah, because <laughs> it's so epic. It's just really is. And it's not even long. It's like 40 minutes, something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, this album is like, I've, I've said this before, like I put this album up there with like the greatest pieces of art that humans have ever created. Like up, not just music, like whatever, fucking the Sistine Chapel, the Sphinx, like whatever the hell you want to say, like. That you gotta like that's up there. Like as yeah. long as humans exist and you can listen to music, that album is never gonna die. Never, ever, ever gonna die. And it's like it's the album along with the artwork because I can't even tell you which I heard or saw first. Mm. And I'm talking like before I was even like ten years old because like that album artwork is epic. Like you know what I'm saying. And it's I hate to use this word because everybody does. It's iconic. It really is. If anything's iconic, it's that. <laughs> Honestly. You I know? Mean, that's the kind of shit that you see fucking hipsters walking around Williamsburg wearing that shit. You're like, they don't even, they might not necessarily even know what it is. Yeah. But everybody knows what that looks like. Everybody does. It's just so amazing. And like, you know, to be able to do that, you know, and to be able to register in people's like ears and stuff like that when they don't even really know who you are or mm-hmm. anything like that. That's just insane. You know, um, I say the same thing about the Beatles. I'm not a Beatles fan, but I guarantee I heard Beatles music in the womb. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just crazy. But yeah, Pink Floyd, so they go and they do Dark Side of the Moon and like everything falls off the planet <laughs> they shook everything off the planet with that one <laughs> they fell all the way off of earth to the moon but i don't think they made it all the way to the dark side it was kind of far they ran out of water um but no the thing about this album that makes it so good and so timeless is that it's just about like the human experience mm-hmm. or the human condition if you will mm-hmm. like it's about war insanity Money, Mm -hmm. greed, like all these death, you know, things that as long as humans exist, humans are going to be dealing with this shit. Yeah. So that's the reason why it's never, it it really is timeless. Mm -hmm. And then obviously like the the actual production value of it is so amazing. I still can't believe. So this is, we're recording this in 2022. That album came out in 1973. So next year that album is 50 years old. Mm Mm-hmm. And it sounds just as good as anything that's made now. It really does. It really does. It's definitely one of my rooftop listens, um, various songs from that album, just jumping in and out and just listening to the words. It's, it's not even just the music. It's the words that they decided to pick and and choose. You know, it's, it's totally insane. Like, I love... Um, what what does David say? Like the dream is gone, the man is grown. Like it's like um like uh I forgot what he says. Well, that was that's uncomfortably numb, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a different album. But I'm just like um bringing out like just like stuff that he says and things that they do say. Like mm. it's just like I don't know. It's their word choice and it's also their musicality that just makes them great. Yeah, but just and just like the whole. I mean. Obviously, there were concept albums before. There was like songs that would like go into other songs, but this is basically one big piece of music. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's like 
the, the only reason there was a pause in it is because back in the day, you literally had to flip the album over. Mm-hmm. If they made it today, there wouldn't have been any pauses. No. 100%. They would have gone all the way through. But literally, every song just goes perfectly into every other song, and it really is just a whole experience. Like, it's so hard to just listen to one song from that album. Yeah. You know what I mean? You it just is. want to hear the whole thing through. Yeah, they flow right into it. I love, like, I mean... I, I don't know any album before that that came with like mad laughter, you mm. know, and stuff like that. And then that like, have a person actually sound like maddening like that. And we got to shout out all the um the background vocals. Like, yeah. on the, I mean, oh, my gosh. I keep forgetting that lady's name. The, Claire Tori. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think she took that to a whole nother level because she's always in the forefront, even though and the voices get bigger and bigger and bigger (laughs) they get bigger and bigger and bigger but you always seem to hear kind of her like as the leader of the choir Mm -hmm. and this is another um style of um that type of singing that i like where it's kind of like flat and tonal and you're kind of singing like wide as opposed to like out too much like her oohs and her ahs kind of go wide across if i'm making shapes for sounds yeah you know and i just think like that in itself it's not it's the whole thing like that that makes that that album so great. It's not just the players and it's not just the music. It's not the progression in the sounds and stuff like that. It's not just the background vocals. It's not just the artwork. It's like every single part of that album. Exactly. Every single part of it is just on point. That's why it's one of the greatest pieces of art ever made and it's i think it has the record for like longest time on the charts i think it was on the charts for like 20 fucking years Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like i'm pretty sure by the time it fell off the charts like kurt cobain was already dead Uh, yeah (laughs) you know what i I think so i think that's insane that is that's insane um but i mean i don't even know what else to say about it it's just so amazing like i'm gonna assume that everybody watching this has already heard it I hope so. <laughs> but if you have it, go listen to it right after this. Yeah. But finish. Make sure to finish the podcast first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a mon- they put money out as the the single for that song, which of course they had to. Boom, for that. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, let's boom, talk boom. about that. Like the cadence, because I think around when we first met each other, we were talking about the cadence in that song, and I was like, if I didn't speak English. I would never understand what he was saying in that song <laughs> because it's the way he chops up his words and yeah. you expect, like if you're learning a new language, you expect the words to sound a certain way. Mm. So if I broke up the word on a, on a, a music bar and stuff like that, like you couldn't understand it. Like if I said, I'm in a high fidelity, like, you know, instead of fidelity, like right. if, if I know that word in English, but I don't know fidelity, right? like I would, I wouldn't, I would be like, what did he say? Yeah, yeah. But that's the beauty of that song, too, and a lot of the other things that are on the album. And it's a beauty of... Well, part of that, I think, has to do with that the song is in 7-8 time, mm-hmm. as opposed to most music is in 4-4. Four, four. And so that, you have to kind of change your the rhythm a little bit. Mm-hmm. And fun fact, the guitar solo in that is in 4-4, four, four because David Gilmore was like, I can't play a guitar solo in 7-8. <laughs> so I imagine he probably had to change the way that he sang it a little bit because yeah. of that, too. Yeah, because the only other way I could see him approaching it is kind of like jumping over the notes, like, I'm, I'm in a high fidelity. Like, yeah. like that and that's corny yeah for that track it's corny but it's cool for like jazz <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but really the this album is kind of like the culmination of them uh creating together mm-hmm. because they all four members of band were really involved with the final sound of the album right which is not the case moving forward necessarily <laughs> <laughs> because and then also this is really the first album where roger waters became like okay i'm the lyricist yeah you know what i mean like they they were saying that like a lot of the time during this t- era they would work on the music and then roger would be like okay i'll come back uh tomorrow with lyrics or whatever so it clearly became like this was the start of roger being like the leader yeah which was good for a while but like, you know it ended up having some problems later on just a little bit but this that became um basically the start of what I like to call Pink Floyd classic, mm-hmm. the classic period of, yeah. pink, of the Pink Floyd sound, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and obviously this album just brought them to a whole nother stratosphere of success. Yeah. They were already around. They already were signed. They were already making music, but they put that out and it's like, you're the biggest band in the world. Exactly. I think the terminology is they put their foot in that album. They put their whole, they put their whole leg. They went all the way up to the knee in that album. You know what I'm saying? 